Easton, and welcome to the Rabbi's Roundtable. I'm Rabbi Peter Hyman, Rabbi at Temple B'nai Israel, and uh, it's always a pleasure to welcome you to the Rabbi's Roundtable. I have two guests. I think you're going to find this very interesting. I, I know I did, uh, and I'm delighted that uh, both Barbara and Richard are here. Thank you for coming to the Rabbi's Roundtable. Let me, let me introduce officially my friend, Ra um, Rabbi, my friend Richard Marks, who is not a rabbi, but uh, you could be if you wanted to. Okay. Um, uh, along with his wife, Amy Haynes, they are both founders of the Dock Street Foundation. And Richard, I'm going to let you introduce Barbara. Uh, my pleasure. Good afternoon. Uh, like you introduced Barbara Peka, um, a friend, a historian, a architect, landscape architect, and the person who uh, is why I'm here today and why our foundation's involved in the Root Star Rose project. Well, this is, this is why I'm so glad you could take the time to be on the Rabbi's Roundtable. I think this is uh, a really important, interesting, illuminating, uh, um, horizon-establishing exhibit. Uh, Ruth Star Rose, the artist, uh, we're going to have an exhibit of her work starting on April 30th, running through June 19th. And uh, just let's, let's talk about it. Um, let's, let's, Barbara, let's start with you. Uh, um, how did you find out about this artist? Tell, me, tell us about her background, who she is, who she was, and uh, why you started collecting and how the book came into being. It's a lot of questions. Lot <laughs> Thank of questions. you for having You're me. You're welcome. It's a pleasure. And Richard, please feel free to join in. Um, Thank you. Rustar Rose was first and foremost an artist who was absolutely light years ahead of her time. Okay. She was born in 1887 and she lived until 1965 and she was born in Eau Claire, Wisconsin but ended up quite near to where we are now at a place called Hope. And she and her family chose to, um, although it was a deeply segregated time, they chose to lead an integrated life with the people that ni lived near them and worked in their household. Interesting, you know, you can see by some of her pieces that there's, there is vision behind the painting. And, and uh, um, so when did you first discover her? Uh, well, I was having some work conserved by one of the best conservators in the country, actually in Chestertown, Maryland. Huh. And um, he was working on a project for me that took over a year, had to do with 18th century paintings. And I came in on it, one of the routine inspections with a friend who's the dean of uh, the International School of International Affairs at the New School. Her name is Nina, Nina Krusheva. She's a friend of, of Richard's and Amy's as well. And we were cold, so we were moving around the studio and just rifling through the racks to see what our friends had finally coughed up the money to restore yeah. in terms of ancestors, yeah. things like that, and pulled out this painting, which is on the cover of our book, um, which is clearly a masterpiece. Yeah. And so we clearly. asked the conservator, it's on Masonite board, and her name was under carefully preserved under a piece of wax paper. And so we, we asked the conservator um, who was the great black artist on the Eastern Shore, and he said, no, no, that's actually a white artist. And we couldn't believe it. We both, you know, she's Russian and I'm yeah. American, and we said, but this person doesn't hate us. This person's right. comfortable with the person portraying, yep. portraying her, and she's a very confident woman who has no racial stereotypes that were unfortunately typical of that day. So that started the journey. And... What a, what a marvelous journey. Tell us a little bit about the book that you and, and your, your collaborators have put together. Well, um, I was lucky to work actually with four women on this book. Um, Leslie King Hammond, who created the Race and Gender Program at MICA, wrote the introduction. Yep. She's the chairman of the Lewis Museum, which was the first place that the exhibition toured. Oh, wow. And then I wrote the body of the text, and then Nina Krusheva wrote the epilogue. And we were really lucky to have a top, top designer um, who was art director for Rolling Stone, French Vogue, creative director of Town & Country, and designed all of Richard Avedon's books, a woman called Mary Shanahan, wow. who is the single mother of a biracial family. And so she had an immediate connection to this. So for all of us, it was really a labor of love. And we all feel very lucky to have met Richard, who said without hesitation, this, the next destination is Easton Island. Uh, how wonderful. Had she been known prior to, to you and, and really, you know, or, or was she sort of flying under the, under the radar or? Well, unfortunately, she was known as the um, rich white woman who made fun of black people. 
And strangely enough, that seemed to be uh, within the realm of white curators when I would ask to see the collection. People were very uncomfortable. And so Professor Khrushcheva and I realized that people were carrying around their own interesting baggage. And it didn't take us long to do see the 200 letters at the Smithsonian or go through correspondence or actually talk to African American people in the community and find out that she was beloved. She was writing a book of spirituals with Paul Robeson. So wow. she was clearly, again, I didn't know that. a remarkable lady. Richard. Well, I, I, the stories that I'd heard that most, not, not most of the people, but a number of people in the community had seen uh, the depictions of Negro spirituals the illustrations that Ruth Star Rose had drawn. And, and like anything else, sometimes when you're viewing something out of context, you can misinterpret uh, in many different ways. And I, and, and I think that was the case. In all fairness, uh, they were done in a period of time where African Americans weren't uh, displayed in a, in, a, positive. in a positive fashion. So uh, as a number of people in the community has, have seen the oils and the portraits separate from the, then then it began to take shape and they certainly understood and then learned the history of course behind it uh, it's just it's just uh, such a wonderful thing that Barbara over these years collected it and and took obviously a great deal of time and effort uh, and also to get the funding to, to get it to the Frederick uh, uh, Reginald Lewis Museum in in Baltimore uh, so uh, our hope of course in bringing it home to Easton, that that's just one step along the way of sharing it with the rest of the, our country. I, I know from here, I think Barbara at Salisbury University mm -hmm. will be showing the exposition, St. John's College. Mm -hmm. So within the state, that's and then what? from that point, who knows? Uh, but it's, it is, uh, it was, when, when Barbara first mentioned it to Amy and to me, and I've lived here 40 years, and did not, I was not aware, I'd never heard her name. Uh, one minute we saw our work, we were so taken and yeah. and pleased at the opportunity to uh, to present it here. Um, you, the, the the audience can't the listening audience can't see, but when you look even at the facsimile of the pictures of the of the reproductions of her stuff, um, there there is clearly not only profound artistic talent, but a sense of um, a message behind the art, which comes out even to the most uninitiated of us, when when you look at that, and that w that's what most captivated me, and uh, a number of things captivated me, but but that's certainly very powerful. I'm just looking at the portrait on the cover of, of the book, and and wow, those eyes and that face says more than anybody needs to speak. It's really remarkable. Um, again, the 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 exhibition is going to run from. April 30th through June 19th in the Waterfowl Building uh, will be seven days a week. Will be open from 11 to 4 daily. It will be open earlier than that, to, but the general public can already come in at 11. In the morning hours, we'll be bringing uh, classrooms of children uh, from the fifth grade and eighth grade. Kathy Dill, first of all, Kelly Griffiths providing the opportunity. Uh, a curricula was written. Kathy Dill has spearheaded it, and I believe we have over a thousand students that will be coming and who have already had some of the history. There have been art and music classes uh, surrounding the work. And, and, and I think the most compelling part is when you uh, um, happen to meet up with one of the Moni families or the Shields or the Potters and the descendants and their reaction <laughs> I know. and Powerful. seeing their yeah, yeah. relatives. <laughs> yeah. uh, and I happened to say this the other day when I had the opportunity, Joan Levy and I, Joan, by the way, is the project manager, okay. really has been the person, along with Kathy Boson from Dock Street Foundation, Lisa Gritty, Rima Parkhurst, a number of people in our community, uh, Eric and Harriet Lowry, uh, 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 Lois uh, McCoy, who is the principal of the sure. Preston Elementary School. The planning committee at, at has just done a remarkable job. I'm sure you can see from the media. And I, and I have to share that in one of the planning committee meetings, uh, Brenda Money Henry mm -hmm. uh, came to help because Jeffrey Money could not come over from Baltimore. And as we were all seated in, in the meeting, uh, Brenda said, oh, just in case um, of any interest. And she opens the book 
to the very beginning, if I could get it here, and shows us that she says, that's my dad. Oh, it gives me goosebumps. <laughs> yeah, it just yeah. gives me goosebumps. Just the, re the reaction of all of sure. us in the room. Sure. So, and just the, it's just so wonderful. All of us can relate to seeing our relatives and, and uh, pulling out the, oh, the shoe box and the photographs. Absolutely. And, 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 you know, given that, that we are involved in the, in the broader community in, in Easton through Tackle, the Talbot mm -hmm. Association of Clergy and Laity, with the, the whole conversation on race, this is, this not only is timely, but it, you know, it's fortuitous that, that uh, so many of the people, you mentioned Harriet and, and Eric, Eric Lowry, Richard Potter, um, Corey and, and Pack. Corey Pack, and Corey Pack so. just a whole group of folk. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's like looking at their family album, and that just impacts and, and makes the work that Tackle is doing even even more uh, more important. So, well, and I have to, if, if I could, also uh, really express appreciation to all the organizations within our community, from the Academy Art Museum to the Frederick Douglass Honor Society, Talbot yeah. County Historical Society, uh, uh, Midshore Community Foundation, the Avalon Foundation, uh, everyone. Uh, embraced it, said, "How could we help?" And certainly, uh, first and foremost, the the Waterfowl Building, right, uh, for for making that wonderful facility available to us, giving us the opportunity for seven weeks. And the schools to, to show this mobilized. in the schools, it's well, truly uh, an effort, an entire community. I have always said since the very first time, and, and they've heard me say this for years, we live in a remarkably interesting community. And, and this is an example of what, uh, I'm not surprised that the backing is for this because it's an example of what I find to be so, um, so praiseworthy about where we live. Not that it's perfect, I'm not suggesting that, but that, that people wanted to support this, wanted to promote it, wanted to get behind it. Uh, I'm grateful, I can't wait to, to look at it and Shade stare and sort of be jealous that I can't do that. I, can I ask Barbara a question? You certainly and, may. And, and although we've collaborated and worked together on this, it's a question I haven't asked, and it's, I think it's an appropriate time. When all this began, and when you put together and were able to come up with the funding and get it to the museum in the Red St. Louis, had, did you picture uh, how our community would react if it came here? And, and has, is it meeting your expectations? Interesting question. Well, the day, the day of the opening in Baltimore, the Lewis Museum, I was with Jeffrey Money, yeah. who is um, grandson of Miss Tish. Sure. And we were in the space together, just sort of doing last minute things to prepare. And his grandmother's recording of spirituals was playing. And I looked at him and realized that he was crying. Yeah. Yeah. And it was such a beautiful thing because he said, Barbara, I didn't know that my relations were, I never saw images of them as young, dynamic people. They're the same eyes in these paintings, but I knew them as 80 and 90-year-olds, and mm -hmm. here they're in the prime of their life, and it's just so moving. Ah. And to think that many f families are descendants, the collateral or direct doesn't matter, right. but descendants of Frederick Douglass, Harriet Ross Tubman, Brave Union soldiers, it's wonderful to live in one of the first communities that's celebrating black founding families yep. of America and extending that yep. courtesy title to others who yep. deserve it. Absolutely. And so it's beautiful to see how the families have completely taken over. Jeffrey practically broke Facebook because of the relations <laughs> saying, I need to know how I'm related to you because I really want to be, I want to claim sure. this connection sure. to these sure. fine looking people. Well, you, you are both to be commended and not only is this uh, a powerful statement for the community. It is also a powerful statement uh, on a broader, more philosophical and, and even historical uh, level. And, and thank you for doing this. One more time, um, the exhibit of Ruth Star Rose's really remarkable works will be at the Waterfowl Building running from April 30th through June, 19, uh, June 19th, seven days a week from 11 to 4. And... Free to the public. Free to the public. Thanks to <coughs> many generous, and generous yeah. is a word we can use quite often uh, about our, our fellow citizens yeah. in this community. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks to their generosity. Well, Barbara, for your great work as an art historian, and an Richard, honor. for you and Amy and those who are uh, 
uh, rallying and supporting. We are grateful. Go see the Ruth Star Rose exhibit. Um, you won't be disappointed. Easton, we will be back shortly. Yeah, it's different than any place I've ever been. <laughs> to um, just be in the room with everybody else and enjoying the show together. I'm very impressed. Just the variety, the quality, and the um, intimacy. And we are back, and welcome to the Rabbi's Roundtable. I'm Rabbi Peter Hyman. Uh, we, we are coming to you from the studios of MCTV in the Avalon Theater. And I have, an, as my next guest, a dear friend, somebody who we just realized is the, this will be the first time that you are on the Rabbi's Roundtable. Ridiculous. R really <laughs> ridiculous. Uh, she may be familiar to many of you, Susie Moore. Uh, Susie is the booking manager and house manager yeah. for the Avalon Theater, which does a phenomenal job in our community. As a matter of fact, true story, I had guests from California this week come in, uh, and I was taking them around, around Easton, and I told them all about you and the Avalon, and, and they looked at the marquee and they said, wow, these are some pretty interesting acts. In Easton? I said, yes, in Easton, and it's due to you. So, well, thank you, Rabbi. Well, thank you. No, no, thank you for being here. And thank you for the invitation to come be here. No, no, I can't believe I'm it's the first time. Well, it will not. <laughs> Good, make me feel bad in front of the whole community. I'm no, no, it's an no. Honor no. To be here today. Uh, you. And there's so much stuff, and there's, there's so many interesting things. Um, let's do a couple of things because I, I really do want to get the multicultural festival, yep. uh, but let's talk about who's coming, what's planned. Sure, sure. I know you just came back from uh, South uh, by Southwest. I, yep, I did. I um, have wanted to go to South by Southwest forever, which is in Austin. Yes, Austin, Texas. Texas. For years, I have been entering. I go online and I enter to win a pass, and it's called the Music Badge, and I won. This oh, year. so it's you know it's. As a nonprofit, we are very sure mindful of how we spend our money, but we really believe in education and furthering professional development. So this is one that I said we should go to, we should go to, and there was no way we could all fly to Texas right. and afford the badge, so I got to go. And it was great. It was completely overwhelming. I think I saw maybe a fraction of 1% of yeah. what they offer. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, I saw so much live music. I saw how hard the musicians worked down there. Um, I got to see the keynote. One of the keynote speakers was Michelle Obama, the first lady, um, with Queen Latifah and Missy Elliott. Really? And, yeah, and it was unbelievable. Wow. Um, another keynote was Tony Visconti. Sure. He's a producer who did worked a lot with David Bowie over the years. Yep. Um, and then I went to, you know, different classes. There was one class that was talent buyers, which what, what I would be. Right. And then venues, you know, and so we all came together and talked. And, and it was just really fun. And it's, so it's always so stimulating to be in a new environment with your, your peers. peers and your, the professional yep. people that you work with. Where, where in Easton was it held? Uh, in Austin, sorry. In Austin, sorry. Austin at the um, convention. Oh, okay. And then it's all downtown and there's... You know, there's Sixth Avenue and there's sure. Brady and Red River, and there's just venue after venue after venue, yeah. kind of open windows, and there's a band. Yep. And right after that band is another band. So it'd be ten bands on one venue, uh, and then right next to that, and right next to that. Fabulous. So, you know, and it was it was great because you kind of go from place to place, and you go, oh, you want to catch this person? Yeah, sure. And then you miss them, and then you find something else. So. Well, Sixth Sixth Avenue is is world famous. But I, I have to tell you that the, the Hyman boys, who are no longer children, are both graduates of the University of Texas. Oh, brother. Love Austin. <laughs> we uh, went to Austin a lot. And, and uh, there, there's, a, there's a, an ambiance about Austin that is different than every other city in Texas. Sure, it's, sure. it's really remarkable. And um, I'm so glad you could go. And, and I know that we will benefit on a multiplicity of levels from your, uh, your, your participation. Um, so, so any any acts that we should know about coming out of that? Well, sure. Right now, though, we're waiting for John Hyatt to show up. Oh, cool. He's got a show tonight. It's sold out. Yeah. Um, we we've worked 
over 10 years to have him back. You know, so when we talk about booking and, and building those relationships, this is one that came through a long relationship that we've yep. had with an agency. Um, but one person that's already come from that is Margaret Glaspie. And she oh, is a young, I think she's 24. Um, she was kind of one of the buzz people down at South by Southwest. Cool. And so the week after I got back, we already had a, a show booked with the Milk Carton Kids on May 22nd. And that was fun because Carrie Rodriguez, who is a performer who plays our Stoltz Room, had recommended them a couple of years ago. Like we, you know, we said to the artist, That's great. who should we keep our eyes out for, who should we book? And so the week after I got back, and she was one of the artists where I was across the street at one venue, she was playing there. You know, like, and I kept missing her. Yeah. And now she's coming to the Outlaw. So Excellent. So the buzz from the festival and the conference that, you know, she's added on. So that is a show I'm super excited for because I never saw her in Austin. Cool. Well, and I like the sound. I like yeah. She's kind of edgy and young and it'd be fun. And not, not to be gratuitous, and I'm really not, but what you do and what the Avalon does, Al Bond was uh, here. I heard the, it, yeah. And, and, and always enjoy speaking with Al. But I said, we are fortunate. Um, you, you, the, the Avalon, Al, yourself, Tim, everybody that's involved, really does raise the horizon of our community and, and add, you add incredible dimension and we're fortunate and, and not just in terms of what you bring in in terms of acts but what, what the Avalon does. We thank you for saying that because we... It's true. You know, we, we do, our hands are in a lot of different places with the farmer's market and I'm sure you and Al... We did, we went all... All yeah. the different things but like right now I'm working on the Clean Water Concert Series That'll come up in June. Tell us about uh, that. It's a partnership with the Chesapeake Bay Foundation. Cool. And it's the fourth year. Um, and we're, we love those partnerships. And I think we're all really passionate about clean waters here. Mm. Um, and that's something that they're totally motivated for. So it's, it's a really nice partnership. And it's a way for us to put a band on the streets and educate people about what they're doing. Sure. Because you know, so, we get hundreds, sometimes a thousand people who come Fabulous. to those free outdoor concerts. And Fabulous. They're all going to be listed at avalonfoundation.org. But the first one on June 4th is um, we're billing it as family night because when we met in the middle of winter, we both thought, let's, you know, let's think about ways that we can make this even bigger and better. And oh. So we've made it a family night. Um, and so some of the viewers out there may remember Kid Singer Jim, and it's been a while since he's been here. But we worked with him for years, and so he's coming back, and he'll start. He'll do about a 40-minute set, and then we've got a group called the Late Bloomers, and they're um, swing kind of honky tonk. Oh, so cool! I, I just in my mind that sh that night, the opening night kickoff is going to be families and funds and, and grandparents and I, everybody out there dancing. So. That's There's what you more want. More to come. Check it out at avalonfoundation.org and read our emails. Avalonfoundation.org. Good for you. It sounds very exciting, and and that you want you want it to be intergenerational because the issues impact all of us, whether you're whether you're 11 months old or 111 yeah. years old. And the closer we all stay together. Yep. Like no. So, uh, and before we, I want to talk a little bit about the multicultural yeah. festival coming up on May 7th, all day at Ava, at uh, Idlewild Park. Yep. It's, um, uh, it's, it's your baby, so... Uh... It's great, and I love it. I, was, I took it over last year, um, and I'm blown away. We have, I think, 60 vendors, um, and they're community people, organizations, nonprofits, food vendors, people who just are trying to do good things within our community and getting the word out. You know, so they'll have tables out there and displays, and um, the, somebody's, you know, they're, they're giving away a pack and play. You can go register for that. Oh, cool. There's, it's very, um, it's really to celebra celebrate the diversity of our community. And we've been working really closely with the Chesapeake um, Multicultural Resource yep. Center. And so the other day we had our final committee meeting and Estella, who's out there, we printed 150 uh, versions. She had made a Spanish version of the flyer. So she's personally taking them out there and, and putting them into the hands um, of, of the people. So, you know, and it, it's, Events like that, where the first Church of Christ Scientist, which is yep. down on the park, they approached me and said, we want to be a sponsor, um, and we just love what you do. And then two weeks later, they said, you know, we were thinking, because we have an event that we're going to promote, but could we make a banner for the Multicultural Festival, too? They just came to me out of the blue and said, you know, we'd love to post it. And, it, you know, it's things like that where I just, 
I love it. I mean, I yep. grew up here. I'm from here. I moved away. I got a little more perspective and came back and just love the place that I call home. Yeah. And it's those little things. Um, Talbot Bank is a, a sponsor. Cool. A peace organization. Oh, peace is one. Yeah. State banks. Target gave us a gift card so we could buy supplies. You know, so I've ordered face painting kits. And, <laughs> you know, it's just, it's just. That's wonderful. It's really a special day. And it's May 7th at Ottawa Park. It's free. 10 to 2, it's pretty quick. We'll have live music on the stage. Um, the Taiko drummers, who are from the Baltimore Buddha Center, yeah, yeah. will be back this year. Um, and they were wonderful. They're a youth group. Yep, really I remember. Great. Um, traditionally, we open the, the festival with Randy Welch, um, and he does the bagpiping. We've got a group of Indian dancers from Salisbury. They're going to do Ooh. three features, um, the butterfly dance and the Bollywood dance. We have a Lakota and Cherokee dance. Sure. You know, and, it's, and I even have a duo who's going to do one song, um, and they're going to do from The Wiz, Ease On Down the Road. And they're going to do it. They dress up, and they do it in sign, sign language. Oh, how cool. You know, so it's like all these little pieces of beauty and creativity and communication kind of just come together. Continuity, to yeah. You know? So I hope Good you for you. So can join us for the Multicultural Festival. May 7th, 10 yeah. to 2, Idlewild Park. It's worth being there. Yeah. And I know you're busy. I know you have to go welcome a band. I think they just poked their head around the corner. I'm not sure. We've been talking with my dear, dear friend for many years now, Susie Moore, who is the booking manager and the house manager at the Avalon Theater. Thank you for being at the round table. This will not be your last time. <laughs> Thank you, Rabbi. Thanks for having me. No. Easton, we'll see you next time at the Rabbi's Roundtable.